Hey everyone, welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Hope you all are doing well out there. I hope you all are having a fantastic week. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by career coach Melanie Mitchell Wexler. Melanie helps those who feel stuck in their current jobs and guess what? Have a case of the Sunday scaries. I don't know about you, but I do know the feeling of the Sunday scaries. Mine was really, when I used to experience it, it was more so about like having to actually physically go into the office (laughs) more so than like, you know, oh, it was my job. But I think eventually if you've ever been in a job that you're ready to move on from, you definitely probably experience it from like all facets. Also, if you're someone who's been searching for a new job, on and off say maybe you've been searching for weeks months or even years and you might be at a point to where you're like i just don't know if my dream job is there and i really am about to just throw my hands up and say i am done melanie can also help you too if you are in that scenario now those are just a few um, ways that she works with her clients to push through and elevate in their career or find a career or a job that they can love and not have those Sunday scaries. When Melanie and I return, um, we will talk about a few things. We'll talk about women and the great resignation, um, why women are leaving jobs, also how can employers get women to rejoin the workforce, and then also a little bonus content for anyone out there who is seeking to evolve in their career. So stay tuned, I'll be right back with Melanie. Welcome back to the Globe Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra. Thank you all for joining. So now I am so excited to have Melanie join the show. Welcome to the Globe Girl Podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, before we get into all the bits of the information today, why don't you get us started by telling everybody out there listening or watching who you are and what you do? Yeah. So thank you. Um, I was actually a recruiter for over 20 years. And in 2016, I left um, the company I'd been with for eight years and put myself back in the market. I was kind of going through my own career journey, not sure where I wanted to land, what I wanted mm-hmm. to do. That <laughs> I was going through my own process at that time. Um, I was taking a coaching course. I honestly would tell you that coaching was, I didn't really even know what I was going to do with it. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'll take it and we'll see what happens. And um, slowly, even because of some events that had happened throughout 2017, financially, I was not in a great place. And so I started doing this, the coaching and resumes, writing, um, just as a way to earn money, um, earn extra income while I was looking for a job while I I had a couple of jobs and things of that nature. And so that's kind of how I got started as a career coach. But one of my goals as a coach now is to be able to take all of my years as a recruiter and bring them to the forefront and really teach people, how do you work with recruiters? What mm-hmm. actually happens in the hiring process? What are those so-called secrets? Um, but also how to navigate the job market. Um, mm-hmm. And having been on both sides, I, I have, I hope, a, you know, a very unique perspective when it comes to that. Awesome. Well, yes. Uh, I think you're, previous background experience (laughs) and then the coaching and just knowing all the things that you know are definitely like it's probably super helpful for you being able to help people because I think that is something that a lot of people um I'm I'm detouring just a second but (laughs) I I think a lot of people don't like understand or know how to work with recruiters Like you just, you mentioned that. And I think a lot of times people are trying to find jobs on their own and it's hard to find, you know, a job on your own. And especially, you know, just say you go to LinkedIn and I mean, there are tons of jobs and there are tons of ways to make connections. But if you don't make the connection in the right way, um, you can, you know, like I see sometimes like when I was applying for jobs, like you'd have like 700 people already applying for a job. And it's like, well, how do you get that, that leg up? How do you get noticed um, amongst all the other people? And then like, where does a recruiter come into play in your um, job search? 
Yeah, it's very important. I mean, a recruiter can actually be your best um, resource. And so a matter of, you know, from everything, like you mentioned, getting connected with the recruiter, what do you say? But a lot of people, unfortunately, I mean, recruiters don't always have the best reputation. Um, You know, they get kind of stuck in that, um, you know, lawyer um, scenario, like they're, they're, um, they're, you know, they have kind of reputation that they maybe aren't, you know, the greatest people in the world, but there are some really great recruiters out Mm -hmm. there. There's Mm -hmm. always bad apples in the bunch of everything you do in life. Exactly. (laughs) um, But there are some great recruiters. So I think people sometimes are just are afraid to work with recruiters because they don't understand what their purpose and role is. And, um, but a recruiter can be a great resource for you. And then also just being able to, um, And that's one of the things I do like to focus on is being able to show people like ways to get noticed. Uh, How do you get to the top of, because the reality is uh, no, no one person is going to look through 700 resumes, Um, you know, because I, you know, oftentimes you need one person. So I was always, you know, I'm not going to sift through and I don't have time. And so, um, you know, I, I have an, I obviously have a sympathetic ear for recruiters having <laughs> done it for so long, but also, um, you know, I'm also realistic and willing to call out the bad as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I want to, you know, like I said, I want to really educate people in terms of how to navigate the market. And I do believe that recruiters can be your greatest, res- one of your greatest resources in that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I will say, so everyone, this is like your bonus content, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the bonus content, but I couldn't pass it up because of when you were just um, talking about all the things you, um, the ways you can help. And I will say, I agree with you on recruiters. This last job that I, ju- I just started a new job about two months ago, and it was, um, I was recruited um, and worked with a recruiter. And it was like the first time that I've actually in my career have been recruited um, by like, yeah, I, you know, you get some like, you know, you get them in your LinkedIn mailbox, you know, all the time. Yeah. Whatever. But this is like the first one that like I went down the path with. And I would have to say, like, had the best recruiter. I mean, it was like she was working like I knew she was working for the company, but it was like she was really working for me and really trying to make sure that I got all the things that I needed or just, you know, checking in. The whole process was so very seamless. Um, It was just like a real partnership versus, like, like you said, feeling like that. Well, I mean, is she just working for like, you know, is she really working to help me? Um, Cause I've experienced those recruiters too, yep. where it's like, you're, you're kind of like, I mean, like, what are we doing here? I mean, are you going to help me or not? Right. So, so yeah, I definitely would say like people, if you're, if you're listening out there and you need some pointers, you should definitely contact Melanie because I think like that, that's, those are the keys. Cause with all the jobs out there now, like I know a lot of people that are like, yeah, there are a lot of jobs, but I haven't really had success yet. And like you said, some of the tips that you're going to be able to, to provide them are probably the things that will help to unlock that next step. It really, it truly is, is one of the things of being able to, I see so many people, they do the same thing. They say my job search process is apply, apply, apply. Mm-hmm. And really the reality is, And sometimes I even get my clients that are a little shocked and I'll say, I don't want you applying for a hundred jobs. We should not be applying for a hundred jobs. Like that's insane. Um, (laughs) What, um, what should be happening is you maybe should be applying. I'd rather you apply for 10 jobs and take the time to find connections, find a network, um, you know, know how to network with those connections, um, get connected with recruiters, with companies that you're interested in, all of those things. That's actually the job search process. The application Mm -hmm. process is really just hitting a button and (laughs) and Mm -hmm. hoping for Mm -hmm. the best. And, um, (laughs) and I'm all for like, let's take control of the things that we can control in a situation that often feels like you have no control. And so identify those steps. And so, that's a really big piece of what I like to work with. And, um, and I, but unfortunately I do see a lot of people that just are either too scared to network or they don't know how, Mm -hmm. or they Mm -hmm. don't know where to begin. And, and so it's, it's really, it's about kind of rethinking the job search process from, from a different point of view. 
Oh, that okay. So thank you for all that. Are, that's some valuable. <laughs> that was a that's, whole other topic, <laughs> girl. That, I mean, that's a whole like value add for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now, now we are going to <laughs> go into our, more of our topic today, um, and it is a women and. Right now, everything that's going on, women are seemingly ghosting the work- workplace. So would you say that pe- we're still in the midst of the great resignation? I would definitely say that we are. I know that there's different terms and, you know, that keep getting thrown around um, with that and whatever you want to call it. Um, we're still seeing the, lands- um, the landscape of the job market changing. And so this is still, you know, very much um, the great resignation, Um, you know, it, we're seeing the impact of it um, still to this day. So we're very much in it and Mm -hmm. we're still seeing a lot happening and, and who knows where the job market is really going to uh, Mm -hmm. land. Um, I think I've personally gone through in my career, I went through two recessions as a recruiter um, I'm here in the DC market. So I've gone through government shutdowns. And then, um, and then of course, now as a coach, I went through a pandemic. Of course, none of us have gone through that. Um, right. And so we're just in an interesting market right now, a market that we really have never seen before. Mm-hmm. And so typically when we're talking about, uh, I'm not an economist, but I just know enough about job market that I can, I can throw around terms, but, um, Uh you know, but when we talk about, you know, possible recessions, possible inflate, you know, obviously inflation that we're seeing right now, we usually don't have a good job market. So it's very weird to say, like, we still have a heavy job market plus these other factors. Yeah. Like those two never go, they have never gone hand in hand. Exactly. Um, so yeah. it's just a weird job market. It, it, really, it really is. I mean, that's what I think I was saying to people, like, because we start we started to see the trend up like last year where there were a lot of jobs. And obviously there were a lot of jobs because a lot of people were leaving jobs. Right. Um, and so then and now, you know, I tell people and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not really happy. I'm like, oh, my God, like there are tons of jobs out there. Are you even trying? Or are you just like sitting and being happy at the current job? So, I mean, so would you say, okay, so with the women, because a lot of women left the job, um, left their jobs in the during the pandemic. Yeah. And we know a lot of those um, reasons were because they they didn't have childcare. They needed to stay home um, with their families. Um, and then there were just people who just decided, I want better for myself. I want better flexibility. I, you know, discovered this freedom during the pandemic as bad as it, as bad as it was on the, if you had to find positives, it was like, wow, I have rediscovered my life. So you had all these people, you know, leaving for different reasons. Now with us, I guess, sort of being in the living in the pandemic state moment. So I, guess I can't really say like the endemic because it feels like it still just keeps coming. I don't know. It still feels um, like it's happening. Yeah, it's still, um, <laughs> have you seen like other factors now for why women are choosing to not um, to leave or to not go back into the workplace? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with that. I mean, um, unfortunately, women, you know, typically are, you know, we're still paid, you um, uh, less than men and even more so for, for minorities. Um, it's even, um, sometimes two to three times less than men. So the, pr- the pressure of like, who was going to take care of the kids, um, mm-hmm. was, you know, is placed on women. That's why women, you know, cut back because it, that it fine from a financial standpoint, there's many people that it just didn't make sense. Um, mm-hmm. we're also faced with elder care, um, with our parents. And, Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of that again, um, burden placed on women. But I do think, um, what I also saw happen was a lot of people did have that kind of awakening of saying, wow, like, I think the pandemic really taught us, like, obviously there's nothing permanent in this world and Mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to really evaluate where you're at. And what do you want out of your life? And I think that was a big motivator for people to take a step back and say, am I happy in this job? Like, why am I stressing out about this job 
oh, you know, seven days a week, 24 mm-hmm. seven. And, yeah. you know, yes. what, what can I do about it? And so maybe that gave us the catalyst to really evaluate what are other opportunities are out there. And, and I think in other times, we probably would not have pushed ourselves to explore those opportunities unless we were pushed um, out of that situation. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think those are the big reasons why, why we were saying we saw women leave and we continue to see women leave at um, very high rates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was this, I was thinking when you were saying, talking um, and wondering, like, is it because I haven't like looked at any research? Um, would you say that it's probably still more women leaving at a higher percentage um, during this time than men? I would say I haven't seen any specific numbers recently on the, you know, up to date numbers, but typically, yes, the high, the, the women have left at a higher percentage than men leaving the workforce. And I even think too, like, you know, where you were saying where people um, had this opportunity to like reevaluate and to figure out like, what is best for me? And yes, while there were, you know, there were, um, elder care, there was child, like child care, staying at home. Um, but then, like you said, there were people who were just like exploring and saying, you know what, I'm going to start a business, you know, like all yeah. the, the businesses that were started since 2020, um, and people deciding to like, take that leap, um, that leap of faith and, and try something different. And mostly probably I say, I mean, I knew like in the back of my head, it was women, but I had to ask um, because <laughs> most, of, most of like everybody I talked to or I met, um, like I've always been entrepreneur and I've always had businesses, but like I started Glow Up Girl, like right in March at the start of the pandemic. And I mean, I was meeting so many other women who were starting businesses during that time. And, you know, and, and men, you know, or sort of like, um, cause it's like, even when you look at it in the corporate workplace, women are more likely going to take that leap to do something different. If we're not happy, <laughs> if we're yeah. not happy, we're like, okay, well, we've given you all this time to do right by us. You're not going to do right. So I'm going to move. And men, you know, just kind of sit in it. Right. I mean, I don't know if they sit in it because the money's good you know, but they just sort of sit in it, but then complain, you know, about About. not being, yeah, about not being happy. And I was just like, well, that's crazy. Cause I mean, there's so many opportunities out there for you to like, not be happy somewhere. Yeah. I'm really big on like, you know, obviously I get, you got to pay your bills. I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know, I totally get that. And, but you know, it's one of those things too, like you really, but you really have to evaluate how that impacts your, mm-hmm. um, you know, your home life and where is it creeping in? Cause I've always said that if you're unhappy in your job, I will guarantee you it's impacting your personal life. 100%. Yes. Um, whether you see it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not and vice versa, if you're, mm-hmm. if you've got an unhappy home life, it's impacting your work again, mm-hmm. whether you, <laughs> whether you acknowledge it or see it. Um, and so, but I do think men, you know, I think, and I think probably a lot of people, not just men, you know, both men and women, but I think men in particular, um, equate their salary to their, you know, to Mm -hmm. their happiness, happiness, um, and their satisfaction. And, you know, and then also we do tend to make excuses of like, well, I couldn't make more than that, or, um, you know, things like that. But whereas women, they kind of, you know, it's like, well, I know I could make more than this. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they kind of, they already have that, that inside of what's out there in their industries and things of that nature. But, you know, and are, you know, have a little bit, maybe have a little bit more freedom to take some risk mm-hmm. in that regard. I mean, if there's something, you know, if there's some, if there's something maybe good about the inequalities of the workplace, maybe that's the, (laughs) maybe that's the takeaway is that we do have a little bit of more freedom to make those decisions and say, no, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Very true. So what would you say are, what are some of the signs that people should look for? Um, um, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Sorry. No problem. (laughs) (laughs) What what signs should somebody look for? What things should they consider if they're thinking about like leaving a job? The first thing that I really tell people to do, and I know a lot of people are not into like 
journaling and things of that nature, but Mm -hmm. I do believe it's really important. You have to put down on pen to paper. I'm old school. Um, you can type it, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I'm over here writing notes. I know I'm like, I've got, I've got all (laughs) sorts of stuff over here, folks. So, um, but I, I do believe putting pen to paper, it, just it's something about that connection um, as opposed to sometimes, you know, typing sometimes. But um, I do think you have to put pen to paper to really evaluate what are the reasons why you want to leave and really dive deep into that. um, Because I think that's the first, you know, is it, do you want to, and then look at those reasons. Are those things that could be solved at your current job that you just haven't addressed Mm -hmm. or are they inherently bad for your mental health Mm -hmm. and your, your, your personal life, are they impacting and how are they impacting, um, your life in those ways? And so really seeing that visually, I think is one of the biggest, um, eye-opening exercises you can do Mm -hmm. because you have to be able to, you know, if you're, if you're talking like, well, I just don't, you know, I don't like Betty Sue or whoever, you know, Uh the other, you know, I want a different job or, you know, you you haven't necessarily done the research. Um, And then that is the next step is really doing the research. Okay. What do you want? Because what I find happens is people leave jobs, but they don't do the deep work. Mm -hmm. And so they end up in the same type of job, same type of situation, same, you know, like, is it the structure of the company? Is it the lack of growth? Is it the Mm -hmm. sound, you know, like all of these are things that we are important, but what is the most important? I talk about like, quote unquote values and I not like our, you know, obviously we have values like honesty and, um, and um, I can't think of any other values off the top of my head on a like Saturday respect, morning. <laughs> respect, integrity. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Complete. I got, on I that, got you. I got you, uh, girl. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, but I also think there's values that we look for in the workplace. So is it growth? Mm-hmm. Is it, um, you know, is it increased salary? Is it better hours? Is it, you know, so what are those things? And then taking those values And looking at where, well, okay, does this job have this? Right. And so oftentimes we look to pull that quick trigger of like, I need out. Okay. I'm going to go over here. And then we didn't do our research and we're in up in the exact same situation we were Mm -hmm. previously. And so, uh, you know, I think as humans, we're often impatient. (laughs) And so we want these (laughs) quick fixes. We want to be able to say, um, I want to make these changes. So I really think it's about diving deep into why you want to leave doing, um, the, what is the most important values for you in your next opportunity? If you could shape your job, I do a exercise with my clients about crafting a vision statement of their, mm-hmm. cur- of their, um, of, for their career. Mm-hmm. And what does that look like? Um, I'm often told by my clients that that's, much harder than they thought. (laughs) Um, And the ones that really put the effort in and really develop it. um, Mm -hmm. And then being able to carry that with them as we evaluate opportunities and we go back to those values and we say, okay, let's, you know, does this company have, you know, X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. And does this job have this? Because if it's not, if it doesn't check those boxes that you said are your must haves, then mm-hmm. it's not going to be the opportunity for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then doing the research, where are those companies? What are those opportunities? Mm-hmm. Where do I want to go? Yeah, I love that. And I think you said a very key word um, early on was patience because I think, you know, people, like you said, people do get impatient. They are like, it's a lot of it's driven off of emotion, right? Like you said, everybody's got a Betty Sue. I love that. Everybody's got <laughs> Betty Sue's at their yeah. jobs. And, you know, you, but you have to, it, it is important to determine like mentally, is this a place that's healthy for me? Or like, you know, is this a culture that I can see myself like remaining in or is it toxic? And um, I love the putting pen to paper because that was exactly what I did, I had a, I have a gratitude um, box um, that I, it's a vision gratitude box, but I like would always put notes in there about 
you know, anything in life. But at one point last year, it was very much about my job um, because I was like, oh my God, like, I don't, I cannot take these people anymore. <laughs> like, I can't take this. I just like, you know, I was like, I can't, like, there's no growth opportunity. There's, you know, obviously paid disparage for women. And like, I am the culture's just like, just culture just wasn't a good fit for me. Any like, just wasn't going to be what I want in the future. And so like, I did that similar exercise. And like you said, as far as like starting to look at companies that you wanted to work for looking at, cause looking at cultures, cause culture became like the number one thing for me in my next role. It wasn't about like the pay. I mean, of course, like you said, we have bills to pay. So of course you want to be paid according yep. to your skills, but the cult- culture like was, was like the number one thing. And if I saw like culture wasn't going to align with what I wanted. It didn't matter what the pay was. I was just like, no, thank you. Cause I've already been there and I don't need to be like checking my emails 24 seven, um, expected to answer, you know, messages on the weekends. Like, no, thank you. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. You have to really dive deep into, uh, further than the surface level of what's happening in your career mm-hmm. and really evaluate that because that's going to be the mo- that's going to help you not land in the exact same situation. And that's what I see. Ha- I've seen that throughout my entire career. I would meet people literally as a recruiter and they we would start at one job and then they would have gone and I'd be like, well, why did you leave? And you know, and then it's like, okay, why'd you leave that? And it's, it's just a reoccurring pattern <laughs> the same that, thing, yeah. and, you know, it's always <laughs> the same situations. And so it's like, okay, until you're addressing that situation, guess what's going to happen? You're going to continue to have this issue. Yeah. And you know what? I think the thing, the hardest thing a lot of times for people is that sometimes it's not necessarily, sometimes there are things that we need to work on. Yeah, there are things, there are moments where we have to stand, like we have to stand up for ourselves. We have to be more vocal in the workplace. We have to, we have to be able to communicate what it is we want. Because someone, you know, said to me, like um, in another interview, I was talking to someone who's like a negotiation coach. And she mentioned, she was like, you know what, like your manager has a lot to do. Your manager is responsible if like probably for a lot of things. So they may not know all the things that you do all day. You have to figure out and find a way to be able to like to like celebrate your accomplishments. I mean, and I think a lot of times with women, we often feel like we don't want to be like we're bragging about, you know, (laughs) we all feel like we're bragging. But it is like that art of being able to like, you know, talk about yourself um, in a way that is meaningful and going to help you to like further your career. And I think a lot of times we don't do that. And we just expect for people to like, know that we're doing all these things. Absolutely. And I think it goes to, you know, for most men, men in general do not have that issue. Not at all. And and we, (laughs) you know, and so sometimes I, you know, not to ever no, you know, not to ever make the inequalities that we have in the workplace less, but the truth is men do not have that issue. Men yeah. are not afraid to ask for more money at the, at the table what, before signing um, with the salary. They're not afraid to have those conversations. And I think we've put some pressure on ourselves of like, well, I, I don't want to be that woman. I don't want to mm-hmm, be the, mm-hmm. I don't want to be the B. I don't want to be mm-hmm. that, you know, like, I don't want to come off as that. I don't want to, Um, And you're right. I think we expect people to sometimes, well, they should know that I'm doing all of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, well, maybe they don't, but maybe they don't also understand. Maybe they do, but they don't know the impact that it had. Exactly. So, um, but again, men, typically we wonder, you know, that is a reason why men have, you know, one of the factors that men have continuously moved, continue to move up that ladder and they see higher salaries, they get higher salaries. And it's because they were willing to ask for it. And so Mm -hmm. we do have to empower ourselves as women to stop being afraid to ask for those things Mm -hmm. and to say, no, this is what I've done X, Y, and Z and, and be able to own it. And you yeah. can do it in a way that's not coming off as bragging. You can still be, you know, exactly. um, you can yeah. still do it in a way that's professional and, you know, still yes. humble, but, um, but we have to be able to own our accomplishments and not mm-hmm. be afraid to ask for the money at the table. 
Exactly. That's so true. So just definitely wanted to like bring that to the to the forefront again because At, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's important. It really yeah. is important because yeah. we can get advocates, we can get allies in the workplace, and we can you know push companies to change policies and things. But we have to collective as a whole yes. start yeah. to change how we behave mm-hmm. in in those situations and in those settings. Yeah, because we are the and we're our own best advocate. Yeah. Um, I mean, and so and and you have to keep the lines of communications op- open communication, because like for me, you know, leaving my job, I mean, I left with a with a clear mind and, a you know, untainted heart because I knew I'd had the conversations with my manager. Like I'd asked for the things that I wanted. I told her about the things that needed, you know, that I needed to see that were differently. And I mean, if, you know, whether, you know, it was that she was unable to do it or the company was unwilling, you know, like, but we didn't, nobody was shocked when I came and said, I'm, you know, resigning. We weren't like, oh, God, I can't believe. Right. <laughs> Where did that happen? <laughs> Just sitting over here. And that was something I learned from like my last job. I mean, I was at the job that I'm that I just recently left for five and a half years. And prior to that, you know, I was at another job and it was one of those situations where I was like, well, you should have known like all the things I was doing and blah, 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 you know. And so I took that as a lesson learned that this time around, I would not like, I didn't want someone to feel, even though it's not your responsibility if they are blindsided, right? But I didn't want out of respect for the manager that I had and was working with, I didn't want her to feel like, so without me all but saying, I'm looking for another job. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Just had the conversations that would put us in a situation of when I was leaving that it wasn't like, I can't believe you did this to us. And even if you couldn't, I mean, hey, I I mean, (laughs) yeah, I mean, (laughs) yeah. You have Sorry. to, you know, you have to be able to put it out there that mm-hmm. uh, what your what your expectations are and what you're looking mm-hmm. for, and mm-hmm. um, you know, good leadership and and sometimes managers don't have the capability to make those changes. You know, that's mm-hmm. just the reality of you know yeah. up up above. But mm-hmm. um, you know, good leadership, good management will help try to bridge those gaps mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. in some way. And yeah. if they can't do it, then they're just they're honest and they're, they're, they're truthful about it. And, you know, and then at the, when that time comes, they'll, they can go to upper management and said, no, I'm not surprised. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, I mean, (laughs) I know for me as a leader, one of the things I've always done with my teams is that I've always said, if I can't get you where you want to be here, I will certainly champion you in another opportunity. If you need me to, if you need me to be a reference, you need me to talk to somebody, reach out to a connection. I mean, I will do that because I'm like, you know, if I can't help somebody and elevate them, then I want to certainly because that's the part to me that's important. It's like when you're a leader of people like then you should care about people. You should care about you should truly care about their advancement and what they want for their career. Absolutely. Yeah. A good leader will will be invested in his or her team and um, want the best for them because ultimately if they're giving them, you know, if they're, if they're helping them be the best versions of themselves, um, Mm -hmm. then they're going to produce better work for the company. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. just, uh, that's Mm -hmm. just, it's a proven fact. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so, you know, a good leader will be able to do that. Yeah. So Melanie, let's talk about the dangers of women. Um, let's talk about first the dangers of women leaving the workplace and then what can be done, you think, to get women back to work? So I think there's a couple of dangers about women leaving the workplace. One, I think that the pandemic has, you know, um, we've kind of taken some steps back when it comes to uh, making inroads in terms of advancement um, in terms of being at, you know, higher level management, C-level um, positions. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, and then of course with pay, um, you know, that also affords that um, there's a risk of continued pay disparity um, in pay gaps between men and women, and in particular with uh, minorities. Mm-hmm. So those are some big factors, but also we have to be mindful of too, of this, um, this push for remote working from home. And um, because, and I think women in particular have to, I 
I totally get why we we mm-hmm. want it and we you know and and yes or no should have it that's kind of each individual's you know perspective but be mindful of like where those key conversations and decisions are made it does come usually from face to face and working directly with those managers so if more women are working from home or in hybrid and they're not in the office, then we are losing some opportunities for those conversations. And if we have more men in the office, then we're going to continue to see these disparities Um, because those, you know, it's that, it's that one-on-one that those conversations are happening. And and so we have to be mindful of it and Mm -hmm. we have to think. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of worry that, you know, there's even, potentially more stress or pressure added to working from home. Mm -hmm. um, Because now not only do you have to do your job, Mm -hmm. but now you do need to be mindful of how am I going to be seen and to be heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a great risk of, um, I think that when you choose, unless your company is entirely remote, Mm -hmm. I think you have to be cognizant of who, you know, you have to, kind of look at it as a, a playing field or a game, um, you know, a board game and seeing like where all the pieces <laughs> are and like, who's, you know, who's where and not to be like calculated or like, yeah. you know, but you do have to be, if you're wanting to make, you know, growth, if you right. want to move up in your company, you have to be aware of like, well, how am mm-hmm. I going to interact with that, with mm-hmm. that, you know, manager or that C-level executive when now I'm not going to be in the office to see them. And I don't have reason to like we don't have emails or you know like right. we don't have, I don't have a reason to email that person or right. I'm not having right. meetings so those are my biggest fears is oh. um that we're seeing <laughs> that we're gonna see so and, oh oh okay so before we go to like getting women back so let's let's talk a little bit because the work from home thing is a very hot topic yes and it's a very hot topic at the job that I left because we were when I left um, a couple of months ago, there were starting to be the conversations about, you know, the return to office plan. What's the return to office look like? And so everybody, I mean, men and women were both like, oh my God, like, I don't want to go back to the office. I mean, can we just like, I don't get it. Why do we need to do this? And our, at the time, the president of the company, um, we were having a, like one of a town hall meeting we used to have monthly. And he said, essentially what you just, (laughs) what you just said, like, oh, you know, I mean, you know, you have to be seen collaborating in the office. Um, You have to be seen in order to be promoted. And that rubbed so many people the wrong way. Like there were chat there, all the people were like in the Q and A's going. So you're telling me that the only way I can get promoted is if I come and sit in the office (laughs) every day and be seen or not seen by you. And then he was trying to like, he didn't really clean it up. He sort of like, well, I mean, you know, like it's important to be like seen and, and working. And I, and I get like, I get that. Like, I think there is a way that that could have been said like, oh yeah, like we're going to have, you know, we have certain collaboration days, you know, in the office. So, you know, every want people to strive to come in and work with your teams or do important meetings. But the way he said it was very much like, no, that's the, those are the only people that are getting promoted is the right. ones that <laughs> show up in this office. So of course, I mean, I was at that point, I was, like in the final like stages of my interview for my new job, which my company that I work for now is 100% remote. Um, everybody's at home. I mean, they do have office space. I was just there this week for a leadership meeting. Um, and each team we- meets like quarterly. So we'll go in for quarterly like gatherings. But it's just like sort of night and day. And then like from my old job, I still hear people saying, yeah, now we have a meeting like next week to talk about the return to the office and all these people being like, they don't want to go back. Right. And it is mostly, it's a mix, but it is probably more women that don't want to go back because it's like, you know, these are people like me. I, I don't have kids. And I was just like, no, like the flexibility and the ability to just like have a lunch without somebody hovering at my desk. I mean, and to just be able to like leave, like log out at like six o'clock versus um, staying in the office to seven thirty, eight 8 o'clock because all those people, you know, that want to collaborate, they were all gone at five. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> they they were gone at five when, you know, we were working in the office and I was still like, you know, still at my desk, like still trying to work because I've been collaborating all day. <laughs> so. Well, that's, yeah, I think it's just a matter of like, you have to understand your company culture and understand yeah. what their expectations are. And True. I, I do think you have to evaluate whether it is, um, mm-hmm. you know, whether you are able to really put away the work right? because there's that bleeding of, if I work from home, then you, are you ever really just connecting? If you know, you have that, Oh, if I do one more thing, or if I do mm-hmm. one more thing. And I would mm-hmm. say that those are, those are the unseen things that people are not going to give you credit for. Mm-hmm. Nobody's, oh, ever yeah. gonna, nobody's ever going to say, well, you know, like, Oh yeah. You worked work till 10 o'clock last night. Like, <laughs> no. You know, I mean, there was, I mean, yeah. every manager's response to that is why well, I didn't ask you to, I mean, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I don't know a manager in this. I, I've just never personally have had an experience where nobody's ever said like, Oh, that's so, you know, you're so dedicated <laughs> for working that long. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, the question is usually why, why are you doing that? You know, mm-hmm. as opposed to like, that's a good thing. So you have to ask yourself, is, is, mm-hmm. is it going to be a healthy situation and environment for you? Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, but you do have to be mindful of like um, the, you know, the, the ability to be seen and to be heard and, mm-hmm. um, and what are you doing to, you know, you know, what efforts are you going to do to, you know, to make sure that the, that's happening? Cause it is right. possible. I mean, that's the other thing is yeah. there's a lot of companies that, um, I have a client that I have worked with on and off throughout the couple of years and her company, um, that we landed her job with is fully remote mm-hmm. and, you know, and she's actually a remote, um, work, work specialist, basically, you know, she's mm-hmm. helping shape that engagement and the work, um, the culture and things of that nature. So there are companies that are, you know, mm-hmm. that were already ahead of the curve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. wasn't a, this wasn't despite the pandemic, this wasn't a new idea. It, exactly. um, yeah. <laughs> just some companies weren't prepared for it. So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's something that is going to, and typically, you know, again, we just know that men tend to, <laughs> you know, that tends to be what they do. Yeah, they they want to go be... in the office because they want to get away from, I mean, a lot of them said like, oh, well, my kids are home. And like, I mean, right. I, I want to, I just, you know, it's just easier for me to come in. <laughs> exactly. And so it's like, um, you know, it'd be easier for women too. I mean, of course, women want to get yeah. away from all that. I, like, yeah, they're the I ones mean, at home having to take care of the kids right, at work. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and my kids are older, so I didn't, you know, I wasn't faced with a, you know, that situation mm-hmm. of, you know, what it's like to, you know, have to be faced with that or, you know, face yeah. with having your child while you're working. I haven't, you know, um, you know, I haven't, you know, been faced with that from that standpoint. And so, you know, it's one of those things that um, I think it's just a really, in terms of what can be done, I think Mm -hmm. that, again, I think you have to go back to what's important for you and Mm -hmm. evaluate, like, I think there's a couple of things, like individually, I think you have to, we have to own what we want out of Mm -hmm. our jobs and then make sure that we're pursuing that. And maybe, Mm -hmm there are going to be those times. And I know there's going to be people like, well, you know, I can't just pursue my dream job. I've got, you know, the bills paid. That's great. You know, that's fine. You Mm -hmm. can still be working towards that. That can still be your goal. And so understanding that maybe, you know, we all have, you know, um, stepping stones to our larger goals. So, Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, for, I think we also have to make pushes for companies to, evaluate their, um, I, you know, would call out every single HR person I know, um, Mm -hmm. or anybody in HR that might end up listening to this and say, you have to evaluate your company policies Mm -hmm. and you really have to take a deep dive and you have to start, people have to start speaking up and saying, this has biases hidden biases in it, right? Because that's, we're afraid to bring up those conversations. We're afraid to have Oh, I don't want to be viewed as, you know, like we're discriminatory mm-hmm. or we're, you know, we're this. And it's like, everybody has them. And so we have to be able to evaluate mm-hmm. are those, you know, what are the biases that are in our hiring practices? 
and right. then uh, developing structures that is a fair basis across the board for promotions. And it may, and it, one of those would not necessarily be, yeah, well, I see Jim every single day of the week, <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. I know, you know, and the thought of like, well, I know Jim's working, Jim's in the office. Well, is Jim really working? <laughs> yeah. Or is Jim just walking around chatting right, all day? Right. Or um, Cause he's in the office. <laughs> exactly. So just mm-hmm. because you're physically in the office does not mean that you are the most productive employee of the mm-hmm. company. Okay. Or is, so, <laughs> or is Jim watching YouTube videos? All day? Right. You know, what's Jim doing? And so yeah. that we have to ask that question and you really have to, um, but it's going to take a collective whole, it, you know, it, it's got to, I think it, there's some of those things. And I think that's hopefully what I'm hopeful that what is going to happen with this, with the push of like women leaving, people leaving companies, people not accepting jobs just because you offered more money or you offered this, but companies that then, and companies, and I will preface this, and I've gone, you know, mentioned two recessions, government shutdowns. So I've Mm -hmm. seen all different types. I've started my career as a recruiter in the best market ever. Like, um, you know, people were throwing money at people to come to jobs. That's not a solution, by the way. Um, (laughs) That's, that's a, that's a band-aid. Um, makes you feel good, but, um, and, and, you know, and I get it, you're happy when you get that salary, but (laughs) it's, it's a bandaid for you as well. It's gonna, um, but I think we have to do it, you know, both individually and then as a collective whole. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, first of all, I, 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 I can, I know that you're good at your job, right? Because of all the great information you've already shared, but then also, because you touch on the things that are uncomfortable for people, the work from the working from home thing is as is a very hot topic um, as it relates to workplaces. But just the fact that you went into like the truth of the matter is, is that you're right. There are some companies that the only way you're going to move up is by going back into that office and finding a way collaborate and being seen. So I really appreciate, I really appreciate that. I was like, I mean, I know she's good at what she does because <laughs> she's always probably giving those uncomfortable truths to people. Well, and I, and I really have always done that even as my, my last team that I love to death, they used to mm-hmm. joke, they're like, you're the dream crusher. for <laughs> and, it, and it's a horrible thing to say, but literally I'd have somebody come to me and be like, well, this is what I'd want to do. And I'd be like, well, that's just not going to happen right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, so let's talk about what we can do. But, right. um, yeah. so, yeah. but I, I, I hopefully am realistic about what the landscape yeah. is. And I try to do that for my clients and say, mm-hmm. You know, I had a client that came to me and said, well, I want to be a C-level executive. And I said, that's great. And that can be your long-term goal. But I can tell you why you haven't been successful is because you haven't even been in that director level space yet. And so you're not going to get seen. You can't jump a 12 foot, you know, there's, if there's Mm -hmm. a 12 foot bridge and half of the middle part's gone, you can't physically jump that. Yeah. You got to build the, you know, you got to put the yeah, pieces yeah, together. Yeah, do the work. And yeah. uh, it's not that I want to crush somebody's dreams or anything, but um, but sometimes we got, you know, we have short-term and long-term goals and we have to assess where those at. And I don't want to, you know, have somebody as a recruiter, I never wanted somebody to come to me and go, well, this is what I expect. And I'd be like, that's not realistic. Right. Like, we, yeah. you know, like, I want you to understand what's out there and maybe I'm not the person you need to work with that day, but it is, it is those uncomfortable conversations mm-hmm. that is going to need to take place in the workplace for us to start making some changes. And mm-hmm. I do think that maybe the, the mass exodus of employees mm-hmm. can, is propelling us to bring these conversations to the table. Yes. Exactly. Because that's what, that is definitely what I was thinking, you know, like, because even when you're at a job and you leave a job and it's like your, like your season may be over there, but then you see other people, like, since I've left the place I was, there've been so many other people that have left at, behind me and that were leaving before me. And I'm like, hopefully this is a learning moment, right? For them to see and say, we need to change some things for the next group for the, anybody we hope to, re- to recruit in the future, the people who are still here, um, because, you know, there were a lot of new people that were just coming in when I was like leaving. I was like, 
oh my gosh, I just hope y'all can get it right to keep these people because they're good talents. I mean, you don't want to lose people because you choose to just try to like keep forcing the whatever the circle into the square peg. Or yep. the square. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't want to keep doing that. So, so great, great, great information today. Um, well, how about you. you tell everybody out there listening or watching how they can work with you? Yeah. So the easiest way is if you check out my website, which is um, www.findsucceedachieve.com. And uh, you can check out, there's a, um, you can hit the contact form and then you can reach, it reaches me directly. Also, if you do check out my website, um, I do offer like a free career journal. Um, I mentioned that earlier. So I do offer a free career journal. You can download, um, just ask a variety of questions about, you know, evaluating your career where you're at. So that is a free resource that you can access by going to my website. And of course you can find me too on uh, LinkedIn. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. (laughs) And so that's my big platform. So you can also find me there as well. All right. Well, we'll make sure we drop all these into the show notes as well. Awesome. Thank you. So, okay. Two more, two more segments (laughs) that we're going to go, that we're going to go through here quickly. So three things with Melanie. Um, One, how do you start and end your day? So I always start my day with my coffee. I love my coffee. Um, Truthfully, I can drink coffee all day long. It doesn't Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't impact my ability to sleep Mm -hmm. and actually in my mind helps me sleep at night. So Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) I don't know if that's true or not, but um, so uh, it's not uncommon if I start the day with a coffee and I end the day with a coffee, because that's just, Mm -hmm. it helps me kind of chill and relax. (laughs) So, um, but I do like to start the day with doing a little bit of gratitude and just Um, writing down um, in my journal about, you know, things that I'm grateful for, things that I'm, you know, focused on bringing to reality and focused on my goals and things of that nature. And um, at the end of the day, I've gotten much better about um, putting away the computer, putting away and just decompressing and not being on, you know, not even Mm -hmm. trying to surf. Um, It's not even really work. Um, You know, there's always plenty on that to-do list, but I do, I'm trying to, I have gotten better. I do have gotten better about just saying, okay, now it's a quitting time and I'm putting it all away. So. Awesome. Yes. Um, what do you do when you have a day off? So I am very fortunate that I can kind of, you know, some days I do have the ability to schedule. Um, and honestly, it's usually just a very, ch- very chill and relaxed day. It could be um, during the summer, I do like just to go and, you know, spend an hour at the pool, just, um, mm-hmm. you know, just again, listening to music, relaxing, uh, no computer or anything of that nature. Um, or I just, you know, like to kind of relax and hang out at home and really honestly not do anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those are the best days. I love, the, you know? I love those moments. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just <laughs> having nothing, you know, just having nothing on my plate to, you know, mm-hmm. have to really think about and I can have kind of a, you know, I can choose what I want to do. Right. All right. So if you are a goal setter or an intention maker, um, what is one that you've set for yourself this year? So the thing that I'd like to accomplish before the end of the year is really setting up. um, I'm in the place of really wanting to build, continue to build my practice and my business. So my goal is to get a group package um, and a group coaching program set up and established. That's my big goal for hopefully to launch early fall is my goal. So, um, so that's my, uh, I've had that kind of on the list and I haven't, um, I've sort of haven't really committed myself a hundred percent to it. Um, Mm -hmm. but I really want to, that's, that's the one thing I want to accomplish before the end of the year. Awesome. All right. Perfect. So, uh, before I let you go, what are three things you'd like the audience to take away from our discussion today? The three things that I would say is that uh, understand that you are in control of your career, um, whether you are in your position now and you're happy, um, Mm -hmm. but, or if you're job seat, you're a job seeker, you have control. It's just a matter of fine, you know, knowing what you want. And the other thing, um, two other things I would say is that um, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to ask for, um, you know, negotiate a higher salary. Don't be afraid to use your voice. 
because it's only then that you can start to be heard and respected. And if that person, and if the, if the receiving person is not receptive to it, that's not necessarily your problem to take on. Um, but don't be afraid to speak up. And the last thing I would just say is that you owe yourself the ability to be happy. And um, this thought of not that you can't leave a job because, you know, of X, Y's and Z's that are over here that, you know, are our daily life um, does not mean you can't be happy in your job. And so that, that, you know, happiness is not, um, happiness is something that we should all have. And, you know, maybe it's a bit naive, but I think we would be in a better place in this world if we had more people that were happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, and again, there's a lot of issues out there, but I think that when it comes to your career, you can be happy and you can be successful at the same time. Those, those two are not, you know, separate. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Melanie. I feel like you have just given us a wall of information today. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I could just talk to you all day. So. <laughs> and you'll have to let us know when you get your group session set up so that I'd love to share that um, with the community as well. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. So, well, stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the Globe Girl podcast. I'm Kyra. Thanks again to Melanie for joining the show today and for sharing all of those great nuggets and knowledge regarding, you know, women leaving the workforce, what can be done to bring them back, and just all the great nuggets to help anyone out there listening or watching to grow or level up in their current career. Be sure to check out her website at findsucceedachieve.com. If you'd like to learn more about Glow Up Girl, visit us at glowupgirl.com. There you can check out past podcast episodes. You can sign up to be a guest on the show. You can advertise your small business or business as well. Grab our social links and so much more. Thank you all for joining me today and I'll see you next week. Until then, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone.